Well, hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon to those of us on the East Coast and morning for those of us in other parts of the country. I want to thank you so much for uh, joining us here um, today uh, to learn about TransTech and some protocols around TransTech. So just a few housekeeping items. If, um, if you have any questions at any time during our, uh, our discussion here today, please, you'll notice over there on the right-hand portion of your screen, if you expand out the go-to meeting box, there's a little thing that says questions. Um, type in a question at any time, and we will leave some time at the end of our discussion today to talk about uh, any questions that you might have uh, that arise while we are speaking. So real quick, the person speaking to you today through his computer is uh, myself, Patrick Anderson. I am an arborologist with Rainbow Tree Care Scientific Advancements. Uh, my position is to provide product support, technical support, and protocol support for our remote staff members located throughout the country as well as our clients. Uh, my information is on there. If uh, any time, feel free to send me an email or call me directly. We also have our tech support line, that one eight seven seven number that you can call at any time for pricing questions, rate questions, again, questions on protocols and the appropriate products to use for some of our pests out there in the landscape. So keep that in mind. Um, real quick introduction to Rainbow Tree Care Scientific Advancements. We were born out of a full a care service uh, company, tree care company in the Minneapolis St. Paul area of Minnesota. Um, we have since branched out into both lawn care and a structural pest care division. Uh, but you can see there that we have over 35 years of specifically tree health care experience under our belts. Uh, we have a host of ISA certified arborists as well as board certified master arborists. So if you should ever have any questions uh, be it around a protocol, a pest, or a product, we can certainly find you an answer in a timely manner. So again, keep in mind that 1-800 number um, anytime you have a question for us. Um, our commitments to our clients is to advance the science of tree health care and to serve you through education, uh, training such as these webinars or in the field, uh, working with you and your crews, and developing and improving tree health care protocols. There are very few um, product companies out there in the world that are specifically doing research and development around arboriculture and protocols for treating pests that harm our trees. So rest assured that anytime you purchase a product from Rainbow Tree Care Scientific Advance Advancements, a portion of that profit goes right back into research and development to continue to improve um, our products, uh, new products coming on the market, and improving ways we care for trees. So that being said, today we're going to talk about TransTech, um, which is a really neat product, um, has a, a lot of uses, and can be used uh, in many different ways throughout our landscape. So we're going to talk about you know, what is TransTech, we're going to talk about the advantages of using TransTech um, versus some of the um, similar products out there. We're going to go over some proven research around TransTech and its active ingredient. And then we're going to talk about some common protocols for incorporating TransTech into your tree care operation. So uh, some common pests that you're probably already treating for or maybe you would like to treat for and uh, showing you how TransTech can be a really good tool in your arsenal in treating some of these pests. So let's jump right into it. What is TransTech? Well, TransTech is Dinotefuran. It's 70% active ingredient Dinotefuran. Uh, Dinotefuran can be found in a few other products out there in the market, but this has the highest active ingredient of those other product compared to those other products in there. It's packaged in a uh, pre-weighed 0.6 out water soluble packet, which again, this is um, a little bit different than other Dinotefurans on the market where you have to use special measuring devices to measure the product. This comes in, a pre, in, a, in an already sealed water soluble packet that you simply will throw into water to create your solution. When we're looking at this from a soil applied um, perspective, which uh, for many years Dinotefuran has been 
uh, very popularly used as a soil applied product. One unit of Transtech at the high rate will treat 100 inches of diameter, while at the low rate will treat 340 inches of diameter. And there's three different ways to apply Transtech, and we'll get into all this later on in our discussion. Um, but this can be applied as a basal drench or soil injection around the base of the plant. It can also be used as a foliar spray, and finally, it can be used as a systemic basal bark spray, where that is an application made just to the lower part of the trunk, um, five feet up, and we will talk more about that here in a few moments. So some other key features here about our product, again, it's the only dinotefuran in those water-soluble packets. Uh, again, because they're pre-measured, um, it makes it very easy to mix in the field. It makes it very easy to dose based upon diameter. Um, it's, a, it's a relationship between the diameter of the tree, how much water you want to mix it with, and then finally how many packets you want to put in there. So it's very easily uh, done. And we have science guides that go along with Transtech so that you can have uh, reference guides right in the field while you're working. Um, once again, you know, one packet of this water soluble packet will treat between 5 inches diameter at the highest rate and 17 inches diameter at the lowest rate. And again, this is uh, with soil injection. Um, Transtech moves very fast in the plant. It is very water soluble. So we get very fast action in the plant. We get this product working to control our pests in the plant very quickly. And we'll talk more about that when we get into research. Dinotefuran is a neonicotinoid, um, and it treats everything that imidacloprid will treat. And again, imidacloprid is probably the most popular uh, plant protection product when it comes to treating for arthropod pests out there on the market. It'll treat everything imidacloprid treats. The two differences, though, is that it moves a lot faster into the tree, and we'll look at that here in a moment, and it also will control armored scales, whereas imidacloprid does not do a good job of um, controlling armored scales. We also we will control a lot of our boring insects, specifically some of our flathead borers, and we'll talk more about that here as well. But if we delve into the research, as I mentioned, Transtech moves a lot faster to get into the plant parts where pests are damaging our trees and shrubs than does imidacloprid. And if we were to look at this chart here, I actually want to skip right over here to the right area of this chart, these two lines here, where the yellow line is imidacloprid, and this red line is Transtech. And what this chart, is, this chart is telling us is the amount of active ingredient available within the plant to start working on pests that are affecting the plant. Now, we know metacloprid can take some time to get into trees, into shrubs. And we're usually pretty comfortable at 120 days after application of metacloprid. So again, after 120 days after application, we look at this yellow line we are pretty comfortable that we have enough product in the plant to start affecting our pest population. Now, if you compare that 120 days to Transtech, we have more Transtech in the plant after 120 days than we do them in a cloprid. Now, let's skip all the way back here to seven days. So if we look at 120 days after application with imidacloprid, where we know we have enough product in the plant, or at least we're pretty comfortable, we have enough product in the plant to start affecting our pests, and we compare that to just seven days after application with Transtech, we have significantly more product, that is, we have significantly have more Transtech in the plant after seven days after a soil-applied application than we do um, imidacloprid. If we continue down here to the middle of this chart here, 30 and 60 days after application, after 30 and 60 days after application with one soil applied um, application of Transtech, we still have significantly more active ingredient within the plant than we do imidacloprid. So what this outlines to us is that we can get um, Transtech into the plant, into the parts of the plant where pests are feeding very quickly to get a very quick knockdown of these pests. And not only do we get a very quick knockdown of the pests, but we have persistency for some time here. So we are still getting persistence for as long as imidacloprid uh, with one application of Transtech. If we look at another slide to highlight this, so this slide here shows us um, different applications of Transtech on larger trees. So this was um, 
Transtech and Zytec, which Zytec is a metacloprid, applied to bur oak trees that were on an average of 22.7 inches in diameter. So relatively good sized trees that we're applying this to. And once again, if we look over here at our Zytec, which is a metacloprid, applied in two different um, solution mix rates to, um, to the soil. So um, this is applied one quart to the soil, one quart of solution per inch diameter in the soil applied through two different application devices. After 90 days, which again, after 90 days, we're feeling pretty comfortable that we have a lot of product into the tree and it's gonna be affecting our pests. And we look to see how much active ingredient is in the tree. If we can plot, if we compare this to Transtech applied through five different um, application, uh, either pieces of equipment or dilution rates, and we include also our basal bark, systemic bark spray in there, we still, after 90 days, have significantly more Transtech in the plant with these other op application methods than we do with our imidacloprid and Zytec. So again, this holds true based upon the amount of solution you're applying to the soil, or through uh, different means of applying that solution to the soil, we are still getting a lot of transect into the plant. We're getting it there very, very quickly. Again, 14 days, this is our red line, so 14 days after application, we still have more transect in the plant than we do after 90 days with imidacloprid. We are getting um, very fast uptake in the plant, we're getting very good distribution, and we're controlling our pests very, very quickly. Here's a study that was done here when we compared the use of Zytec, which is again a metacloprid, to Transtec um, with our um, hemlock woolly adelgid. We saw that trees that were treated with Transtec recovered much faster compared to trees treated with just the metacloprid alone. And if you recall from an earlier slide, we discussed the fact that Zytec or metacloprid does not treat armored scales very well, whereas Transtech will. Many of these hemlocks, not only do they have hemlock woolly adelgid on them, but they also have hemlock elongated scale, which is an armored scale. So with Transtech, part of the reason for that improved recovery may be is that we're also knocking out that population of the armored scale, the hemlock elongate scale. One of the other problems we see with imidacloprid is the fact that we have had instances of mite outbreaks associated with metacloprid. And there's a piece of research that is coming out if it hasn't already been published that has shown that application of metacloprid actually improves um, a mite's ability to lay eggs. So a mite that is feeding on a tree that's been injected with metacloprid will actually, or may actually lay more eggs versus an untreated plant. So that might be part of the reason why we have these mite flare-ups. Now with Transtech, we have not seen, nor are there any documented cases that we know of, of a mite flare-up happening after an application of Transtech. So that's another kind of neat feature of the product is we don't have to have that concern around a mite outbreak like we would with some of our other systemics, uh, namely imidacloprid. Now, if we delve into more of this research when we're looking at the treatment of armored scales. So what this graph is showing us is this is um, three common foliar spray applications for armored scales. So we have insecticidal soap, we have flagship, and we have onyx applied um, three times during the growing season to control pine needle scale. So we can see here with these three treatments, these are all foliar sprays, Apply three times, you get very good control of pine needle scale. This is our percent mortality. So we're pushing 100% mortality with all three of these treatments. Now, if you compare that to just one soil apply treatment with Transtech, we're getting the same results. So we are applying Transtech once as a soil application, and we're getting the same results as we get with three foliar applications of products that we can see are commonly used to control scale insects. And of course our control, we're getting very little mortality whatsoever. So one application of Transtech as a soil application holds up against commonly used practices for treating 
armored scale insects in the landscape. If we look at another study here with pine needle scale, if we look at our chart here on the left, and this is just our controls versus transtech, we're getting 90.75% mortality on second instar nymphs with one application of transtech. Over here, if we look, we have 126 and a half average adult females for four fascicles um, in this trial versus no statistical amount of live females on the treated with one application of transtech. And this research was conducted here, you can see by Dan Herms at Ohio State University. So once again, one application of transtech as a soil application shows really, really good results, especially on some of these harder to control scales, namely these armored scales. And here we can see just another example of our treated versus untreated. We have our untreated here. This is false oleander scale on southern magnolia. You can see it's pretty well covered. And here we have our, our treated tree, and it looks like we have one single scale on that treated uh, area of the plant. So again, um, a very, very good treatment for armored scales, which once again, there are not too many good options for systemic products to armored scale insects. And we'll discuss why that is here in a little bit while we, when we get into the protocols. So, you know, we've been kind of showing how TransTech compares to imidacloprid, but it can really be a good companion product to imidacloprid in many instances. Or here, Zytec, which is imidacloprid, when we talk about applying imidacloprid, we're usually talking about applying in the spring or again in the fall because we know it takes a little while for imidacloprid to make it up into the plant, but once it's in the plant, we have a pretty long residual. Um, now, what happens when we have a large tree infested by some kind of an insect in the late spring through summer? Well, this is where we could bring in TransTech again to get that, that quick knockdown and a full season of control and then we can complement that with a fall application of Zytec or imidacloprid so we have full control next season or again vice versa. We can apply in the spring to get you know full season of control but then come in with some transtech to get that quick quick knockdown. So again we can think of this as being a rescue treatment when we show up to a property that's already being infested with an, an insect. So how can you apply TransTech is the next question. And again, we mentioned this a little bit already, but we can apply this as a soil application, which was probably the most common way to use it. And now what we have seen with soil applications over the years is that you get your best results by applying low volumes of solution directly to the base of the tree. So applying low volumes of solution directly around the root flare of the tree. And there's a few reasons for this. One is simply, if we go further out from the tree, that's just more area that the, the insecticide or product needs to travel before it makes it up into the crown of the tree. And the other reason is, is you have more fine roots. You have a lot of fine roots right around the base of the tree. If you ever do an air spade excavation around the base of, around the base of a tree, you'll find you have a lot of fine, fine roots there, which are taking up water. So if we apply it right there to the base of the tree, we are getting it into a lot of fine roots there that are taking in the product. So you basically you have more fine roots per cubic volume of soil closer to the tree than you have further away from the tree. So the further you get away from the tree, the less roots you have to take in the product, and then once the product is taken in, the further that product has to go. So you can apply this as a soil application, either injection, or basal drench right to the bottom of the tree in a relatively low volume and get very, very good results. Now the other way that you can apply this product, which is unique to Dinotefuran itself, is through a basal, a systemic basal bark spray. Uh, as of right now, there is not any other product or any other product that has had a significant amount of research done to it that shows that you will get very good control by doing a low volume systemic basal bark spray. And how you perform a low volume basal bark spray is simply you will mix, in this case, we're mixing six of our TransTech packets per gallon of water. And then we are applying that 
from about four to, to five feet um, at the top of the trunk, the, here at the four to five feet from soil level to this point on the trunk, and then going around the tree and getting even distribution around the entire lower part of the tree. And what we're looking to do is applying one and a half to two fluid ounces of solution per dBH inch in this area, getting full coverage around the circumference of this lower part of the tree. And TransTech is so water soluble, it actually moves through the lenticels in the bark and gets directly um, uh, exposed to the vascular system of the plant and it goes right in and starts moving in the tree. And if you remember, we looked at a slide just a little bit ago that showed that we, we were getting very, very fast reaction of the plant to taking in that product when sprayed through this lower stem spray. And we're also getting a very long residual when applied this way. Now, believe it or not, when we first talk about this with our clients and we say, hey, you know, we're going to put six packets of TransTech into one gallon of water, you know, their initial shock is, well, that is a very expensive gallon of water. And it's true, that is a very expensive gallon of water when you're looking at it from a mix rate point of view. But now when you look at it at a, a practical point of view, um, one is spraying that lower part of the trunk is going to be a lot faster than having to excavate and do a drench or drag out your hose and do a, uh, a soil injection. So. It's faster, so from a labor standpoint, you're going to save a little bit on labor by doing this lower stem spray. And then from a product standpoint, while you're right, that is a very expensive gallon of water. That gallon of water is going to go further at that mix rate, looking at spraying one and a half to two fluid ounces per inch of diameter, than you would by doing a soil injection or a soil um, drench. And so if we take this example here, if we are going to say that 20 packets of TransTech is going to be $350, which again, we're using round numbers here, and these numbers are high, so don't be too scared by these. Um, if we compared that to our, our application of a lower bark spray, so if we're going to spray, if we're going to treat a 10 inch diameter tree, and we're going to use our lower bark spray, then we'd only use $16.41 worth of product. Whereas if we were doing a 10 inch tree as a soil drench or soil injection, then we'd be using $35 worth of product. And again, this is at the high rate, one packet for five inches of diameter. So not only are we saving um, energy and labor because it's a lot faster to spray that lower trunk, but we're actually using less product when applied that way. And that is because of course we're getting it right into the, the trunk, right into the vascular system, right into the xylem by bypassing the roots and going right through into those lenticels. So we get to use less product because of that. And once again, we have a very large host or um, label of, of plants, um, plant damaging pests that we can treat with TransTech. And again, you'll notice this is very, very similar to the um, the label of an imidacloprid, except for we have the we have armored scales included in this. <clears throat> so let's talk about some some protocols around using TransTech. Excuse me. Um, so we have what we like to call a plant healthcare toolbox, and this is what we like to try to stress to our clients. Excuse me is that we don't have just one way of applying a product. Um, and there are many ways to apply products to trees, and it's going to be based upon the site, the pest, um, your client's expectations. But number one, we should always strive for these cultural practices. Just simply making these trees and shrubs healthy to begin with will make them less susceptible to some pests. And if they should become infested by a certain pest, then it should make the recovery a lot better. But then on top of that, of course, we have things like foliar sprays, which we can do at TransTech. We have soil applications, which we can do with TransTech. And then finally, we have tree injections. Um, so every one of these will play a role when we go out and start scouting in landscapes and thinking about how we want to treat for a specific pest on a specific tree at a specific site. 
And this Play Healthcare Toolbox should, should play into your uh, re appropriate response process when trying to monitor, diagnose, prevent, and ultimately control pests in the landscape. So let's again, let's look at this from a practical sense, ways that we can incorporate TransTech into our everyday uh, plant health care programs. So let's take a look at scales and mealybugs, because scales and mealybugs are a very predominant pest. Um, they're often misunderstood when it comes from their, to their life cycle and ways to treat them. And you can find them just about everywhere throughout the country. So a real quick life cycle of any scale, whether it be a soft scale, armored scale, or mealybug, is we have adult females will lay eggs underneath their protected test. Those eggs will eventually hatch and become crawlers. And this crawler phase, this is when we are looking to apply foliar products or contact products because these crawlers are just out there walking around. They're very small. They're soft bodied. They're very easy to control when they're small in this crawler phase. Now eventually these crawlers find a new feeding site and they settle down as some kind of nymph. And in some species they will settle down on a, a leaf and then in the fall they'll, they'll pick back up and they'll settle down as a second instar on a twig. In some species they simply just settle down into a new site and never ever leave that site again be there for the rest of their lives. And of course eventually they become adults and the whole thing happens again. Now let's look at soft scales and mealybugs specifically and let's look at how they feed because how they feed plays a big um, role in how we treat for them and in what products we treat for. So if we have our scale he lands on our egg and cross this here our egg rather our leaf rather he lands on this leaf and he begins to feed he inserts his stylet or she in most cases it's a she she inserts her stylet here into this vascular bundle and this vascular bundle is made up of xylem and phloem. And the reason why it's important to know that soft scales and mealybugs feed in this vascular bundle is because of systemic insecticides. When we apply systemic insecticide, it's coming up through the xylem of this vascular bundle. So these insects are feeding directly in the area that the, the product that we are using is introduced into the plant. Now, of course, one way to distinguish our are soft scales is that they produce a lot of honeydew. They passively feed in this vascular bundle and everything they don't digest immediately comes out their back end and we get honeydew. So this honeydew here is a very sugary substance, excrement substance that of course lands um, on other leaves, the trunk, patio furniture, cars, and that sticky substance is a great place for sooty mold to grow on. So if you start seeing a lot of sooty mold and honeydew, there's a good chance that you have a soft scale in your tree. Now let's compare that to how armored scales feed or hard scales feed. So now these critters land on a leaf and they start to insert their stylus to feed. Now notice where these guys are feeding compared to our soft scale. Our soft scale is over here in the vascular bundle where we're introducing systemic insecticides through soil application, trunk application, or trunk spray. These critters are over here and they're feeding on individual cells. Now this is why imidacloprid is not going to work on armored scales because imidacloprid is going to come up into that xylem and it's very, very large. It's a very large molecule. It doesn't make it over into this area. Whereas our dinotefuran or our transtech is a smaller molecule and while it may not permeate into these cells that they're feeding, it will be in this area in between the cells, if you will. And when these guys are searching for a new cell to feed on, they come in contact with the product and then perish. So this is why TransTech is really going to be our best option when using um, systemic products, either soil applied or, again, bark sprayed on our armored scale insects. And again, as we just mentioned, imidacloprid is not effective against armored scales. So again, we have a toolbox approach to treating insects. So there are many products that we can use to treat um, uh, scale insects, but these are all going to be used during the crawler phase. And now dinotefrinin we can use as a foliar application. We would use it as one packet for 25 to 50 gallons of water. 
for these guys, you'd probably want to do uh, 25 gallons of water, just knowing how difficult they can be to control. And this works as a local systemic within the plant. So if we spray the foliage with TransTech, it will move in as a local systemic into the leaf, and it'll be available for about 7 to 14 days. Again, we talked a lot about soil applications. So again, with soil applications, we have imidacloprid. We also have Lapitec, which is acetate, which we can apply as a soil application. And finally, of course, we have TransTech. And again, the advantage of TransTech over Zytech is that it moves to the plant very, very fast. You still have a very long residual, but it moves there very quickly. And of course, it's going to be effective against our armored scales, whereas imidacloprid will not be effective against armored scales. And of course, we have our trunk application, which we already mentioned, where again, we are spraying between one and a half to two ounces of solution just here around the lower trunk, getting it introduced into the plant very, very quickly and getting very good, fast control of our insect pests. So now let's look at emerald ash borer, as this is becoming a, a much more um, important pest throughout the country, uh, especially now. We're finding it as far south as uh, Louisiana and Arkansas. We have it now in Tennessee and in Georgia. So this is moving all over the country. Um, so let's talk about the life cycle of emerald ash borer, and then we can, you know, we'll delve into the protocols for treating emerald ash borer. So with our emerald ash borer, they emerge here in the early spring uh, as adults. They fly around and they feed on ash leaves for a little while, and then they decide to mate, and then they lay eggs. Uh, the protected parts of bark in on ash trees. Eventually those eggs will hatch and again this is going to be in the early summer the eggs will hatch and we'll start to get several instars of these larvae here which these larvae are what doing is what is doing all the damage in the ash trees by eating away the vascular system of the plant. And you can see here when we get very very high populations of emerald ash borer you get a lot of damage to the vascular system, and that is what is killing the trees, is the vascular system is simply being eaten away. Now, the overwinter in the tree actually has one of these little larvae, and then in the early spring, they pupate, and the whole process begins again. Now, we have observed, and you can see this in the literature, what they call the ash mortality curve. And this ash mortality curve can be related to the amount of treatment options and frequency of treatment options that you have within a given population of ash trees. So basically, if we look here at our mortality curve, we have one year after infestation, two years after infestation, right around seven to eight years to nine years after infestation, this is when we go from having a lot of live ash trees to suddenly a whole lot of dead ash trees. Now again, we can relate this with the amount of product options and timing to treat an ash borer. So once again, you can see through the first phase of an infestation up to that, you know, maybe six, seven, eight, nine year infestation phase, we have a lot of different treatment options, a lot of different products that we can use to treat emerald ash borer. And again, when we're in this, this initial phase of an EAB treatment program, um, we can use things like imidacloprid at the, the highest rates, which we would apply like we would always apply imidacloprid either in the, the fall or the early spring. We have, of course, tree injection treatments of emmec and benzoate, which have shown to work very, very well, work for a two-year period, and are probably your best chance of um, treating a tree that's already been affected already um, at a high high population level. And then we have TransTech. And TransTech, once again, is where I learned we can apply it throughout the growing season. It moves very fast to get in the tree. And we can also use these trunk spray treatments so that we can treat a large population of trees in a short period of time. So if we look at the research here on TransTech in EAB population centers, here we can see the untreated tree with a lot of different galleries here being affected by emerald ash borer versus our treated tree. And what we see here is we see that we had, we had emerald ash borer in this tree when it was treated but the TransTech effectively killed the pest 
And now the tree, you can see here, is already starting to heal over that damage. So using Transtect in one of two scenarios, one is we have an early infestation of emerald ash borer where we have a lot of ash trees, but it's an early infestation. We treat early on. We can continue to use this product um, for a, a while in, in an EAB outbreak. And our other situation would be is if we have a low population of ash trees. So again, this would be in situations in other parts of the country where we don't have um, streets that are lined with ash like we have in the Midwest. But again, in the Northeast where we have ash trees uh, in small plantings, in the Southeast where we have ash trees and small plantings, we can use Transtech for a very long time, if not in perpetuity, as a very effective treatment for emerald ash borer. So if we look at this a real quick case study to demonstrate how well our Transtech works over a period of time um, in high EAB infestation areas, this was a project that we undertook, or a research uh, project we undertook in Hazelcrest, Illinois. And now Hazelcrest, Illinois, it was hit very, very hard by emerald ash borer. In fact, by the time we made it out there to begin treatments, we were already seeing percent canopy dieback. So here in 2008 is when we initiated treatments. And we were already, as you can see, we already had, you know, around, hovering around 10% canopy dieback. Uh, now, of course, this could be related to a few things. These trees um, were not, these were city trees. Um, they were your typical city tree. They weren't probably under the best care. Um, but we had some canopy dieback already. Now we did annual treatments of Transtech as a bark spray in the spring, imidacloprid at the high rate in the fall, imidacloprid at the low rate in the fall, and then biennium treatments of and benzoate injected into the trees. And if we trace this over time, here after one, two, three years, we start to have a spike in canopy dieback within our plants. And what we can see, we we're hovering between that 10 and 20 percent um, canopy dieback, which I should mention that we consider 30 percent to be our threshold with successful treatment on emerald ash borer. So if we can hold a tree to 30 percent or less canopy dieback with our treatments, we're considering this to be a successful treatment. It's when we get above 30 percent that that's when we start um, to say that our treatment is beginning to break down. But now you can see one, two, three, four, five, six years, six years of constant treatment, uh, yearly treatment with Transtech held up very, very well. And it wasn't until we got into this, this latter phase that we started to get above our 30% threshold. And now it's also important to remember that this was an area that was heavily planted with ash trees. And this was probably one of the highest populations of emerald ash borer um, in the country at that time. So we had a very high population of pests. We had a very high population of plants that could be affected by the pest. And we were able to keep these trees looking relatively healthy for several years um, with applications of transpect, as well as applications of imidacloprid. And here we can see this is a picture from 2012. Our untreated tree is effectively dead. We have our spraying treatment of Zytec here. This tree is looking great. And over here we have our spraying treatment of Transtec also looking really, really great. So in this case, this is four years of treatment. Um, we have dead standing ash trees that were untreated, but we still have very green, very beautiful ash trees that are holding on within the, uh, the attack of EAB. So to review what we spoke about today, um, you know, Transtech moves very quickly within the plant. We can get it in there very fast, and we can get it in there high enough concentrations to start affecting our, our many of our pests uh, very, very soon. Uh, it controls a, a large range of plant damaging pests, uh, including emerald ash borer, which of course is of huge concern to us around the country, and then specifically armored scales. We just don't have um, very good systemic products, soil applied or trunk applied systemic products that control the armored scales very well. We can apply Transtech in three different ways, including a lower trunk spray, which actually works out to be cheaper uh, for product cost and also is very fast for a labor savings um, point of view. And this also can be used, of course, as a rescue treatment because of the fact that it moves so fast. So we can apply this to, to large trees that are under attack by a pest and know that we can get 
pretty good results pretty fast compared to other systemic products and this would also take away the need for spraying on large trees that are under heavy attack and that we don't want to wait for a minute to start working on. So with that I'll go over to our question pane and see if there's any questions here that I can uh, answer for us. Um, I will say that sometimes these are quite, um, these can be very uh, uh, in depth and sometimes I need to get back to people off our, our webinar here. Um, so here we have our our first question here is, um, what treatment would we recommend for ficus scale in an in indoor atrium? Uh, foliar spray is not possible. I just did a Zytec soil drench and a, um, a bark spray. So that is a good question. I have to be 100% um, with you. I'm not 100% familiar with ficus scale. So I will get back to you on that. I, I'm assuming FICA scale is an armor scale. And now on that assumption, um, I would think that either a um, soil application or a bark spray application of TransTac would work well for you. Now, I'd have to look into FICA scale just to, to look at that uh, life cycle for you. Um, so I'll get back to you on that. But again, as soon as an armored scale, I would go with either the, the soil applied or um, stem spray. If it's one tree, I'd probably just go with the soil applied because it would be a little bit easier to mix up for just one tree. Uh, it looks like I have some math wrong here. Um, $350 divided by 20 works out to be $1750. So we'll, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So that, that would be a correction. So if you were to treat a 10 inch tree, it would work out to be $17 and 50 cents uh, with a bark applied product versus the $34 with a um, soil applied. So you're still saving some money. You know, I was just off about a dollar. I apologize for that. Um, a very good question here. Should I use surfactant when using TransTech as a bark spray? Um, Initially, when people started uh, experimenting with the bark spray applications, they were using a bark penetrating surfactant. Um, it was a uh, uh, probably pencher bark is what they were using. Um, now, since then, people have found that, and this is through research, they have found that, and specifically with Valent, uh, they have found that you do not need to use a bark penetrating surfactant with um, with the bark sprays of, of Dinotephrine or Transtex. Organosilicate is the type of surfactant that they were using. Um, now that being said, when using a surfactant, I've, um, I've experienced and I know people like to use the surfactant because you can see your spray pattern a little bit better, and specifically on thicker barked trees. So if you're applying to um, a thick bark white oak or you know a hemlock, um, you can see your pattern a little bit better with that surfactant. Now, that being said, keep in mind that at the rate that is recommended for that surfactant, which is about three ounces per gallon, you will cause phytotoxicity to anything green. So you can change the color of lichen. You can burn um, plants that are um, that are small below the tree, for instance, azalea. Um, so be careful if you're using that, that bark penetrating surfactant uh, not to, to have it touch any green foliage. Um, let's see here. Is there a DBH limit to treating trees, um, ash trees over 20 inches, or large diameter oak trees for gall? Um, we really, this hasn't been researched very much. That's a very good question. Um, right now we are hovering around the uh, 30, 35 inch mark when it comes to emerald ash borer um, is that's kind of our cutoff for using TransTech in emerald ash borer. Um, I don't know if we have any good research on any larger diameter trees when treating things like scales or aphids or things like that. So that's a good question. I don't have a good answer for you. Um, uh, we can discuss it later on if you'd like. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, is there a, there is a, a very little smell once it's mixed. Um, 
there is very little smell. I'm not sure if that's a comment or a question, but there is there's very little there's not much of an odor to it um, once it's mixed. So um, that that is correct. And then let's see here. Let's look. I have, I have one more question here. Does the bark spray method work as well in pine for pine scale as it does for deciduous trees? Um, and that's another good question. Um, you know, I don't know if we have any data using this for um, pine scale on pine trees, but it does work well for um, uh, hemlock woolly adelgid and along a hemlock scale on hemlocks. So based upon that experience, um, I would say you probably have a pretty good chance of getting good control um, on a pine tree using it that way. And then let's see here, we have another question just pop in. Uh, we have a property with uh, 15, 25 to 30 inch ash trees um, with Zytec soil drench with great results. Well, that's great to hear. Um, again, you know, with um, in, in populations of ash trees where emerald ash borer has yet to be very prevalent or in situations where you just have a low population of ash trees, you'll be able to use things like Zytec as a soil drench or Transtec um, if you, again, for a very long time, um, we have we have anecdotal evidence, and we have um, people that have told us that they have used um, Zytec specifically, which is a metacloprid, through the heavy portions of an EAB outbreak in their area, and it's simply because they started treating that tree early enough to where you know they were able to really knock down the population within the plant before it got to be very big. And then once again, you know, in areas of the country where the ash tree population is, is lower compared to the Midwest, um, we'll be able to use things like Zytec and Transtec um, probably in perpetuity without having to switch over to um, a stem injection. Now that being said, when we have a tree that's heavily infested that's starting to approach that 30% that um, defoliation, that's when we might want to start thinking of switching to a stem injection with something like MMX and benzoate. Uh, all right. Oh, we have one more question just pop in here. Um, say I was planning on using three packets for a 15 inch ash drench. You're saying a basal spray can use one packet. So essentially, yeah, so if we are treating a 15 inch tree, we're going to want to apply a solution of about um, 30 ounces. So you could use one packet in 30 ounces. And, um, or excuse me, did I do that right? So. I have to get on my calculator here, but yes, though the, the, I think the meat of the question there is um, you can mix at the bark rate. You don't have to mix a full gallon at six packets um, to treat a tree. You can figure out, um, you know, what one packet will will make. So again, if we take 128 ounces and we divide that by six. One packet is going to be good for about 21 ounces. So if you're again looking to apply that between two ounces to two and a half ounces, then you'd be able to get about uh, 10 to uh, 14 inches of diameter in that case. Um, so let's see here, uh, is MMEC and benzoate only applied by stem and trunk injection? In the landscape, yes, MMEC and benzoate um, is only labeled to be applied through a trunk injection. And there was a comment uh, doing that kind of math exercise that we just did that that, that can be um, a savings when you're using um, the bark spray method versus the trench method. So yes. Um, very good question. Thanks for bringing that up. And I'll wait here just a moment or so more for any other questions that should roll in. Um, once again, if you do have any follow-up questions, um, 
you can always email me there. You see my email right there, panderson at treecarescience.com. Feel free to call or text me at my number there. And of course, you always have the tech support line. So the 1877 number uh, for ordering product, any rate questions, protocol questions, things like that. Um, we'll have somebody pick up the phone immediately. And if that person on the other end of the phone can answer you, answer your question, um, they will turn to our resource of knowledge and somebody will get back to you, usually by the end of that business day, if not sooner. All right, guys. Well, I guess we can uh, conclude our conversation for today. Uh, thank you again so much for your attention. Um, I hope this was helpful. Again, if you ever have any questions, feel free to contact me or, or Rainbow in general. And um, we look forward to you, uh, working with you in the future. Uh, if you have time tomorrow, we'll be giving another webinar tomorrow on one of our products, Lepitect, at the same time. Uh, you can sign up for that on our website, treecarescience.com. And again, thanks very much, and we'll talk to you soon.